Having this size of a travel trailer with all of its overlanding capabilities and all of the versatility that we see in this space here, I mean, this thing just shouldn't exist. And the fact that it does is so cool. Let's go take a look. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another video. For y'all that are new here, my name is Miles with Firmly Unbound. And if you are a returning viewer, I am here at the Ember RV display in Indiana. So this is a really cool event. It's a really cool time of year even where all of these RV manufacturers, they have all of their products on display for dealerships and other people in the industry to come take a look at. So really glad that Ember was able to get me out here as this is my first time filming Ember RVs. This may not be the first video that I put up from here, but this is my first time really covering their products. And man, I'm serious. I am like very, very impressed at what I'm seeing here. And it's kind of cool because this is actually my last day that I'm here in Indiana filming. And I have been filming RVs for three weeks straight, going from the Hershey RV show in Hershey, Pennsylvania, straight here to Indiana for two weeks. So I have seen virtually every travel trailer in the industry. And this thing, after seeing everything else, is certainly a cut above in a lot of different ways. I'm gonna show you all those ways as best I can here in this video. But first, let's uh, look at the floor plan layout and the specs real quick. So this model that we are taking a look at, this is their 221 MSL. And this right here is certainly my favorite in the overlanding series that they have. It's, I like the tandem axle size and I like the layout and the space inside. I am just somebody that I prefer a little bit more size, but if you want to see some smaller options, they have some other options here as well that I have filmed. So there'll be videos of those as well. Or if you want something bigger, they also have their touring edition and I'll be showing you some video content from that. And they also have their E-series, which is right over here. So lots of different videos that will be coming from Ember, but you can see their E-Series there. That's going to be more of a traditional style travel trailer from Ember. But this here, this thing is just so stinking cool. As you start up front, you have such a nice looking front just cap here and just front build to the travel trailer. The design is really thought out. And then something that I noticed that is just really impressive is there's no you know, silicone in your seams here along the sidewall where all these connections are. And that's something that I'm really impressed by because working at an RV dealership for three years in sales, I saw where even brand new RVs a lot of times, if they've been on the lot for six months or a year or however long it may be, I mean, that silicone seal, it gets yellow, it gets dirty, it gets dusty. And I had never really thought about that until I saw something that doesn't have silicone all around the seals. Oh, also, look at this. It's a little caterpillar hanging out with us today. That is so cool. I literally, I had to pause to take a phone call from my mom actually. And once we came back, we got a couple caterpillars here hanging out with us today. So that's fun. But no, it's really impressive. And I really am, you know, not now that I'm not seeing the silicone all through here and like up through places like this, I'm like, wow, oh my gosh, it's just caterpillars galore. Um, I'm really impressed with that. And I think that's really nice and something that is just going to make this RV look more like how you see it right now for a longer period of time, just not having those little annoying things like silicone. Also silicone fails. So like I would see used RVs come in with silicone on them and you know, two year old, five year old RV, whatever it may be like that silicone is peeling off and all kinds of stuff. So like to see that. Um, let's look at the specs real quick on this model. Cause I am very curious. Like I think this might be too big for my half ton truck. Um, unloaded is 6,031 pounds and then gross vehicle weight rating is 7,550 pounds. And then you're going to have a 1,479 pound cargo carrying capacity. But what I really need to know is the hitch weight because it's the hitch weight that's like really important on something like this, where that hitch weight up here, that weight that's gonna be sitting on the bumper of your truck, that is going to be directly correlated to your cargo capacity or your payload capacity on the truck. And you wanna make sure you're well below that payload capacity because that payload capacity also includes occupants in the vehicle, any weight that you put in the bed of your truck and any additional cargo that's in the truck. So definitely wanna stay well below that number here. And let me see what the hitch weight is real quick. Okay, and the hitch weight on this is 690, which actually is not too bad, but you have to think too, like 
filling propane bottles and stuff like that will add to it. So I don't know. I think it's safe to say the hitch weight will probably equate to somewhere around 800, 850 pounds, which actually makes me feel like this is a pretty capable size for my half ton truck. So I actually really like this thing and I'm very intrigued by this. I'm almost kind of looking at this like, would I want this for myself? Because it is cool and I like it a lot. So you might hear me as I go through this video mention some things where I'm kind of looking at it through a lens of like my own personal ideas and, and thoughts of ownership on something like this. Um, but up front, you have a really nice looking tongue jack here, definitely different from anything else in the industry. So this is a Lippert tongue jack that you have there. And see over here, even just little things like your um, breakaway cable here, this is going to be on a coil cable. So it's gonna prevent it from you know snapping or getting damaged over time and things like that. And then I think this door is probably gonna be locked because yeah, they have been, but this is just storage access. There's the control for your power tongue jack up front. This is a nice solid aluminum um, storage space through here. And then you have your propane bottles back behind here. So two 20 pound propane bottles there. And then this has what they call the trailblazer chassis. So this is going to have a tube steel frame and that's gonna add more strength and rigidity to go off road. And it has a two inch receiver off the back with a 300 pound capacity. So kind of a custom style frame that they're doing underneath here that is really, really solid. And then you have things like these Lippert quick drop stabilizer legs. This is actually something that Lippert made with Ember. And we've now seen it in other products and other travel trailers out there, but Ember was the brand that worked with Lippert to design this. So they had something that was more stable and you can connect a drill to this here since it is a manual stabilizer. Connect a drill to that, it will shoot down incredibly quick. And the extra support on there really makes these things feel rock solid. So, you know, it's not gonna shake and rattle and stuff like that while you're inside. It's going to be, feel very, very steady. Underneath here, you have a spot to store your sewer hose and then fully enclosed underbelly. All your water tanks and water lines sit above the enclosed underbelly and you have 12 volt heat pads on your water tanks as well. And what I'm hearing is that I believe you can even leave the tank pad heaters on and they will only trigger on when the water in that space or when it identifies that the temperature there is under 40 degrees. So you don't have to remember to turn them on and off. So that is very cool. Storage space down underneath here, you can see it's just very clean and concise down through that space. You have a Lippert solid step. You have a spray port right here for a campsite water source. And then down underneath here, you have a Kurt independent suspension system. So Kurt is a Lippert company and you have this independent suspension system, which definitely makes this capable to go off road and gives you a really solid sturdy suspension on there. Basically their idea with this is they just want to make it so that wherever your truck can go, this trailer can go. You have a nice Wrangler tire here. It's a, a Goodyear Wrangler tire and is their workhorse all-terrain tire. And it is a 235-85R16. And then one thing that's really, you know, worth pointing out as well is down underneath here, I think this is all steel right here. So it's a metal plate all through here. And that means if you were to have a blowout, like one of the serious things that I saw working at an RV dealership is if somebody had a blowout, it was always evident because everything down underneath here would just get torn up and that significantly devalues your coach and that's something that you don't want. So having all that metal underneath there means if you did have a blowout, it's not going to damage anything, which is also very important. Back here, you have this really cool system that they use that is essentially like an emergency brake for your travel trailer. It's going to make it so that your wheels aren't going to move once you get to your location. It'll snap back there and then you just move it forward, it sits on the tire and it's gonna prevent your tires from moving one way or the other when you have that connected. Propane quick connect line down underneath here and then again, stabilizers off the back. And if you check this out, look who's here today. I don't know if we'll actually see him in this video. He's running around filming here with Ember as well, but shout out to Josh the RV nerd. If you haven't subscribed to his channel, you should definitely go check it out. He is a good friend of mine, also a great mentor to me as well. And have a lot of fun every time we cross paths because we cross paths often, especially at events like this. And he's somewhere here running around filming some of these Ember RVs for y'all as well. Coming to the back, you have this Lippert ladder to get up onto the roof. But before we talk about some of that stuff, I wanna talk about some of the construction because you have not only an Asdell sidewall, but you actually have the same Asdell composite roof and 
flooring down underneath. So everything around the construction of this travel trailer is all composite panels, no wood in there, and it is going to have that composite panel that isn't gonna be susceptible to moisture damage and things like that. So it doesn't delaminate over time and just much better quality, much more expensive of a product, but you're getting a much better quality product with that. Also little things like brake and reverse lights on here. So many travel trailers don't have reverse lights, which is you know weird, but if you start paying attention to that, you'll realize that a lot of them don't have reverse lights, surprisingly. Your spare tire is the same exact tire as your other tires, same wheel as your other wheels. So it looks really good. And then you have this rear storage access door here. It's a friction hinge door and man, is it sturdy. I mean, that thing, this feels like it's not even gonna move in like 30 mile an hour winds. I mean, that is a very strong door. And you can see here, this flex space that you have is so stinking cool. They use this E-Track system that gives you so much versatility in this space. So this here is kind of the office setup, which this is what makes me like this model so much. Um, if you don't know, I've actually been living out of my truck while I'm here in Indiana. Whole other story coming on that on my Firmly Unbound YouTube channel and how that happened. But man, it would have been really cool to have an RV like this because I've been working out of my truck. But look at this desk space you have where you can kind of have this opening to your environment. And not only is this a desk, you also can just put a mattress on top of this and now it's also a bunk. You could do another bunk up above it on that E-Track system. You could hang a hammock in here. So much versatility for how you can use the space. You can do a double size bunk in here. It doesn't have to be a single size like that. And there's currently a bug screen down right there on that door, so we'll keep the bugs out. Slam latch door on that, and just everything about that is just so dang impressive. As we come along this way, you have a cable driven slide out over here. Looks like you probably have a 30 amp power connection there. Yep, 30 amp power supply. And can't really get back to that other side because of this fence here, but only other thing over there is gonna be your water connections. And then as we go up the ladder here, this will be a retractable ladder, so this will collapse and retract. And as we go up this ladder here, get up here and you can see there are 800 watts of solar on this roof. So wildly impressive. You have a 3000 watt inverter, 270 amp hour lithium battery. So all of this combined is going to do things like run your AC on the RV. Now, how long the AC will run is going to depend on your amount of sunlight and things like that. But you have the capability and everything here is already done to be able to do things like run your AC, run all of your outlets on the RV off of battery power. So a ton of solar capacity, huge lithium battery. And the way I explain solar, this is what you need to understand about solar. Solar panels themselves are, if you think of it like gasoline, solar panels are like a fuel pump and batteries are like your fuel tank. There's Josh over there. Shout out to Josh the RV nerd doing his thing. Um, so, <laughs> got totally distracted. Uh, solar panels are like your fuel pump. Batteries are like your fuel tank. So you need to have a good fuel tank size if you wanna run lots of components for a long period of time. And then solar is going to determine, however much solar you have determines how quickly your battery tank or your gas tank replenishes and refills. So having a 270 amp hour lithium battery is incredibly impressive. It's a very expensive battery they're giving you on here. So really, really cool. WineGuard digital antenna up here as well. And that is a Truma low profile, um, uh, low profile, uh, what is it? AC, I almost said a low profile fifth wheel. I've been filming too many RVs, y'all. But <laughs> you have a low profile AC there as well. And then finally, this is a fiberglass roof here as well. So just incredibly impressive with that. Definitely not your standard RV roof and really, really cool. So we're gonna come back down and then that's just about everything on the outside. So we're gonna go ahead and head inside, but I do wanna show you real quick. They have these stabilizers on these blocks here. That is actually the flooring panels that they use. So you can see what that flooring panel looks like. Very lightweight, very strong and rigid and has a really good screw retention and it's all composite material there. So no wood in that space. As we go inside, also keep in mind your windows. These are dual pane European style windows that just look great. They, um, the way that they open up, let me actually just see if I can, let's get this open real quick so I can show you real quick and then we're gonna stay inside after this. So you open it up like that and you can see how wide that window opens. I mean, it is just huge how big that opens up and then they do things like you have your 
privacy shade here that actually comes up from the bottom of the window instead of the top like everybody else. So you actually can have this little like crack you can peek out of your RV and have a bit more privacy when you want to just, you know, see who's walking up to your camper or something like that. And then you have the bug screen as well that'll come down from the top. But okay, let's take a look around this floor plan. And one last thing before we take a look around the floor plan actually outside, there's just so much to talk about. I'm sorry, y'all. You have your screenshot here. So that is going to allow that screen door to close on its own, which that's really nice. If your hands are full when you're walking out, you can just bump this here. It will detach and close behind you. And you have a privacy shade that comes up from the bottom there. Real quick, before we step inside of this RV, there's something that I'm really excited to talk to y'all about and I actually wanna ask you for a favor. So if you've been here for a while, you know that I pretty much never ask y'all of anything, but I'm going to right now because I started my second YouTube channel, which is called Firmly Unbound. Firmly Unbound is the name of my company and Firmly Unbound is an expression of exploration and freedom in work, play, and faith. And I'm really excited about what's to come on this YouTube channel. There's a link down below in the description of this video and in the comments as well, where you can subscribe to Firmly Unbound. And I pretty much spent the whole last month traveling dang near coast to coast across the United States to show you what it means to live Firmly Unbound. So some exciting video content is coming. Can't wait to see y'all there. So as you come this way and inside, this is a Murphy bed style floor plan and I love the way that they do their Murphy bed. I'm going to get back to this in a second. Obviously you have the stargazing window up there that is just a huge statement right when you walk in. It looks really great and just so cool. I mean it's I'm looking at travel trailers for myself and just knowing that you know if I get anything else it's not going to have that just does not leave me feeling very satisfied. I'm not going to lie. Nice looking living space in here. And then the cool thing about the flexibility of this space back here is it really can be whatever you want it to be. If you want this to be a couple's coach with just an office, this is what it looks like. If you want to have double size over double size bunk beds, you can do that. If you want to have a double size bunk on the bottom and a single size bunk over the top, you can do that. If you want to hang a hammock in this space, you can do that. I mean, there's so many different ideas and Ember is so good about if you have an idea of how you think this space can be used, Comment it below because Ember will see it. They will see these comments and they want to know your feedback, your thoughts, and they want to know how you would use the space. But this is what they call their e-track system. They actually took this from the automotive space and like kind of like commercial trucking and so many different accessories for what can be built into this track here. So there is a lot of different options and things that you can do with this space. You see your USB ports here, individual lights, all of your lights have individual controls as well as light switches so you can kind of make the lighting what you want it to be and you can see all the tracks around here it's definitely making it a very versatile space and going to be able to do a lot with this space there so that gives you the flexibility of making this like a couples coach a you know bunkhouse coach and oh there's even tie downs down here as well so if you want to put e-bikes in here kayak in here anything like that also can do that as i turn back around you have your sofa here in the slide out and then it does have that table there as well. And what I like about this table is this bracket they're using is about the most solid bracket I have ever felt for a table that inserts into a sofa this way. I mean, this thing, it has a slight little give to it, but it's way less wobbly than every other table like this I've seen in travel trailers. So really, really like that window on this side, window on this side of your bed as well. And then back behind this, you see you have another table here, so that can be used for that jackknife sofa there. And both of these sofas actually are almost identical. You can see this one has the cup holders on the end, but and this one is a little bit wider. So it does give you more of a you know comfortable space to be able to lay out this way. Actually, I really like this a lot because if y'all have heard me talk about travel trailers that I like that I would think about for myself, like being able to lay out would be important to me. So I do like the idea of that. The only thing that's maybe a critique for me on this floor plan is like the TV position is not great for right here. Unless you're like laying down this way, then it's perfect. If you're just laying down this way and your head is facing towards that TV, that is absolutely ideal. So if I'm just traveling by myself, I mean, that would be an ideal situation now that I think about it. So I think I just contradicted myself there actually. But anyways, y'all are hearing my real, just honest thoughts and opinions as I walk through here. Um, really nice looking flooring. Again, keep in mind this subflooring underneath here, all that composite material. And let me show you what's going on around this bunk area. 
right here with your lithium system. I think this is so stinking cool. You can see all of your power consumption here and everything will be displayed here for how your power is being distributed. You can see your batteries at 88%. If I were to go and turn on the AC, it's going to show you how much power is being drawn from the AC. And this is really going to give you a good breakdown of all of your controls here or all of your consumption here for your solar and your batteries. And then also this will link to your phone as well. So you can also see it from your phone. The batteries are stored underneath the bed. That way you don't have to worry about theft with those batteries. And also it's nice having them inside because lithium batteries like to be warm and that's going to help with them staying warm as well. Around the bed space, you have wardrobe storage up here, clothing rod in there. This is all, you know, these are solid wood cabinet doors as well. So good quality on that. Definitely a cut above other travel trailers this size. Pull out drawer, soft close on the drawers. You have the Truma Combi system. So this is going to be like your tankless on-demand water heater and your heating system all in one. Really, really nice. And I've heard great things about that. Actually, it's a good amount of uh, pictures and stuff out there that I've seen of people camping in Ember RVs in you know snowy conditions and stuff like that. The people here that work here that own the company, things like that, they also have camped obviously in Ember RVs and they take them out into cold conditions and just performs great. Now let's get this down into the bed position and very simple to do. So you can see not a whole lot of storage underneath there, but that's because they have the Truma system under here and your battery system under here as well. I absolutely love that they went to this style latch on the Murphy bed so much better than the metal clips we usually see on the side that a lot of times they don't even get installed in the correct location. So you can't actually even get the latch to work properly. So definitely like this latch system so much better open this up and you're going to have your queen bed here that will pull out. It is simple as that. I just did that whole thing with one hand. Really not difficult at all. And look at how nice the lighting is. Um, one thing that should be pointed out as well is the temperature of these lights, you know, whether like how warm or cool they are, they definitely are on the warmer side and they're a little bit of a softer light. So it feels much more residential. These are actually the exact same style lights that typically get installed in a residential home as far as like the temperature of the light. So it looks really nice. looks really great underneath here as well. There's an LED light bar up above the bed and you have these pockets here. There's going to be outlets and things like that on that side, plus that orange little night light. And then they even did this here where this little hole right there is installed there. So if somebody wants to run like Starlink or something like that, that would require a cable to run to the outside. That is already installed there as well. So you don't have to cut holes in the things. It's really, really cool the way they think of these things and the thought that they put in to this product. And then as I turn around this way, keep in mind your window up here will open. So you can't open up that window and it will have same thing, bug screen, and it will have privacy shades. All your privacy shades like this as well have a reflective layer on the other side. You can kind of see it right there. So it will have that insulating factor to it as well. And as we turn this way, really nice looking fascias on your slide outs. I mean, they look really clean, look really well done. You don't really see like nail holes or staple holes or anything like that. Really well constructed. Above your slide out, even giving you additional storage up here. Loved how this just has the flat look to it, but you can see how the door kind of hangs slightly below the lip. So it's not hard to open them, even though they don't have a handle on them. I really like that having that more just flat look back here. You're going to have storage that lifts up underneath here. This table's blocking it. So, but down underneath there, there's a big storage space that goes all the way down to the floor and you'll have another one here where that table is located at. And then you're going to have a Truma air conditioner here. So you can see it's a low profile 13,500 BTU AC and it is both low profile on the roof and low profile in here as well. So it doesn't take up much ceiling height and in here, the ceiling height is great as well. I don't know what the exact ceiling height is, but it feels like it's got to be close to like six, nine, six, 10, maybe. I don't know exactly, but I'm six, two and on my tiptoes, my head's still not close to the ceiling. You have your vent fan up here right above this space. And then right here you have your kitchen space. So they do some interesting things in the kitchen. First of all, let's show some storage, nice cabinet doors. This here 
has an air fryer function on it. So your microwave will also act as an air fryer. And then they do that because they're giving you a two burner north to south stove here, which I think just makes sense. I've never used more than two burners in my life. So I think two burners is plenty adequate. Obviously it has the glass cooktop here or the glass, uh, not cooktop, the glass cover. So you have more countertop space and no oven, but that's because you have the air fryer function in the microwave and that's going to give you so much more storage space. So huge storage underneath here. Same thing underneath here as well. Nice big storage space and then three pull out drawers that will all be the same size. And I just, again, love that there's soft close on those. You have a massive circular stainless steel sink in this area, black faucet, looks really, really great. And then window here on your campsite as well. And as you come to the refrigerator, now the one thing I would really like to see Ember start doing, and y'all let me know what you think about this as well, but y'all may have seen some of my other videos. I would love them to go to these new refrigerators, which Furion makes one that open from both sides. Like imagine you're sitting in this office space, Furion makes a refrigerator where you can also open the door from this side, which would make it so much easier to get to from that office. Cause as it sits right now, to get to this refrigerator, you'd have to get up, walk around the refrigerator and open it. Or they could just use the new Furion refrigerator that is out there now, where it could also open from this side and this side. So I think that'd be a cool thing to see from Ember especially with the idea of having like a office space back here. Um, no floor vents for your heat in here. That's something also worth mentioning. You can see it looks like, um, you know, the heating system, it's a, it's that Truma heating system. Okay. And yeah, it looks like you have, you know, some heat vents here. They're those circular openings where it looks like heat's going to be running out of there. And you see the same thing down underneath here as well. So no floor vents for your heat. Right here where your TV's at, that looks to be about a 32 inch screen connects TV with a sound bar built in. And then you have storage space all underneath here. USB ports back behind there. This will swivel around off this bracket as well. And then storage space all up through here with a spot to install a Wi-Fi router right there from WineGuard if you would like. And then back into your bathroom. You have a nice looking bathroom. They definitely do a great job with the design in here. It looks really nice. Have the LED backlit medicine cabinet and then even has this kind of night light in here. So if you just want to have soft lighting in here, that's not too aggressive for nighttime. If you're coming to use the restroom, you have that porcelain foot flush toilet and then even little details like just adding a grab handle going in and out of the shower, just stuff that other people don't think about. You have your window in here, but again, you have the privacy shade that comes up from the bottom so you can just keep it like cracked open here if you want to something like that bug screen from the top and then in this shower space they do some really cool stuff like this is the first time i've seen this in anything other than a rockwood or flagstaff from forest river this is going to be essentially like a water recirculation system where in your rvs like gray tank water is very precious and then if you're boondocking your fresh water supply is also very precious and nobody really gets in their shower before the water's warm. Maybe there's people out there that do, but most people want to let the water warm up first before they get in the shower. So you're just wasting water. You're both wasting your water supply and you're wasting space in your gray tank that everything draining out of there will fill into. So wasting water on both sides. This here is going to allow the water to recirculate until it gets warm going through your water heater. And then you can flip this switch that will allow the water to flow through the shower head. So you can step in as soon as it's warm and you'll know it's warm because this will change colors when it gets warm. So I love that. I'm glad to see that in something else other than Rockwood Flagstaff. And then as I step into the shower, ceiling height in here is probably about five foot nine, five foot 10 maybe. And then it's about six foot three, maybe six, four in the skylight. So for someone like me, I definitely have to step into the skylight. My head touches right here. So I would have to squat down or something like that if I'm not in the skylight. But nonetheless, it's not a bad size shower. It's just a little limited on height, which makes sense for a travel trailer this size. It's not anything too crazy, but just something to keep in mind. You have storage space down underneath here, spot for your toilet paper. And then you have storage underneath the sink. Nice big rectangular size sink here in the bathroom and storage behind the medicine cabinet with a magnet latch to hold that shut. Ring for your towel and then light switches outlet behind there in the corner. And last little thing is just your window up above this 
space here. You have that window that will open up. Obviously, you have the rear access door as well. And I think that's just about everything. So if I miss something that y'all want to know, let me know down below in the comments or if there's any you know, things that you have as far as recommendations, things that you like, things that you don't like, let us know down below in the comments. I know I would like to know personally and then Ember would obviously love to know as well. So let us know what you think. And then that's all I got for y'all. So until next time, live firmly on bounds.